Okay, so this is like the first studio vlog I've done in years. I think I've only done like three vlogs ever. So bear with me. This is kind of a big experiment for me. But I'm kind of in between things. I didn't have anything to give you this week as far as my normal content goes. So I thought this would be a good time to kind of take you along with me on a typical day. I have a day job, as many of you know, so I only have so much time off, which means I have to cram a lot of art-related things into a small amount of time. So that's kind of what we're going to do today. <laughs> um, you will be seeing me in my pajamas. Um, that's the perk of being at home. I love having a home studio for that reason. I don't like to leave the house unless I absolutely have to, especially if I have to drive and I live in the country and... That means I always have to drive. And then my other part to having a home studio is that I can dress however the heck I want because I don't have to go out of the house. And so you're going to see me in my pajamas. And uh, it may not be a pretty sight, but it is what it is. Uh, they say to dress for the job you want. And that is the job I want. I want a job where I can stay in my pajamas all day. And basically, that's where it's at. And honestly, even when I'm working my day job, I'm wearing scrubs because I work at a hospital. And so I'm pretty much in glorified pajamas while I'm there. So anyways, I just want to get that out of the way. You're going to see me in my jammies, all my jamified glory. It is what it is. So today, I think that I want to clean up the studio a little bit. I'm going to get Monty out. He's my tried and true RoboVac. And take him for a spin and I'm going to clean some of the surfaces of the studio. And then I also have some materials that I need to get ready for some upcoming Holbein workshops. And I want to start my newest project for my next review. I am going to be finally putting together a core watercolor palette. I've already started it, but I haven't had the chance to actually work on the project for it. So I'm going to start doing that today. And throughout, you may see Maisie. She's here with me as well. You're going to hear her in the background and yeah. So let's just get to it. I'm going to start. I think I'm going to start off with some cleaning and then get into the creative flow and start working on my preliminary sketch and then see what I can do for my whole bind stuff after that. All right. Before I could take Monty for a little spin, I had to clean up the studio a little bit. I had my recent bumblebee painting out drying on a drying rack, so I had to pick that up and move that out of the way. And <laughs> pro tip here, if you don't want to spend a ton of money on a drying rack that is made specifically for artwork, buy a laundry one. This was just a cheap laundry drying rack that I bought from Amazon. It folds up, it tucks away, it's perfect works just fine for drying paintings. And I mainly use it when I'm doing oil painting because that's really the only thing that takes so much time to dry. And now I'm bringing Monty out for a spin. I like to use him with a remote control because it makes me feel powerful. <laughs> Actually, mainly because I have a sculpture there that I don't want him to chip up. And you know, I am a crazy lady driver. So of course I drove him right into a silicone mat and a cord. <laughs> But he is my own adult form of a, what is it, a remote control car. So I just take him for a fun spin around the studio. And then I began just cleaning up my surfaces. I'm cleaning the bar now, mostly kind of just dusting because these surfaces don't get very dirty, especially this one. I only usually use it when I'm making tea or something like that. You can see my bubble tea there. And then I came into the main area and let me tell you, this was a mess. I have stuff out from various projects. I have all my Holbein stuff out because I've been working on getting ready for my workshops. I also have my core watercolors out because I've been working on that video. I have numerous, numerous rags. I don't know what's going on with my rags. I still need to figure out what to do with those. Some of them need to be washed. Some of them probably just need to be gotten rid of. 
And now that I've cleaned off the surfaces, I am using some studio wipes to kind of get rid of some paint splatter. <laughs> ah, spring cleaning. I definitely need to do a deeper spring cleaning soon. I need to wash the floors and things like that, but I'm kind of waiting until after mud season before I do that. And I did sweep up a little as well in between things to help Monty out, but I, that's not on video. Okay, so things are cleaned up for the most part, other than things that I have out that I'm using. And I have Maisie over here. Look at her. She's so funny. I have a bed for her. But she prefers my chair. What do you think, baby? Look at this rad blanket that I got from Kohl's recently. Oh my gosh. This video is not sponsored, by the way, <laughs> um, but I I got all kinds of cool stuff from Kohl's recently that's Crayola themed. I, I don't know. I'm a child. I can't help it. My favorite thing was this giant stuffed colored pencil. How cool is that? I love her so much. And then I also got this throw blanket as well. And what are you doing, baby? A couple of candles. I got this one that says create. I haven't burned it yet. I'm not really good about burning candles. I usually just use like Scentsy or something like that and do it in a melting pot and then keep moving forward. So, okay. This area is still a little bit messy. Not as bad as it was. I have my core stuff out because I am working on that. This is the palette. A little preview. You're going to see it in a video soon anyways. I had weeded out the colors that weren't as light fast between these two and then obviously I had a couple of duplicates. Not sure how I feel about this color palette yet. There's a lot of these brownie yellows. We'll see. We'll see. So I'm going to start working on a preliminary sketch. I think I'm going to do like a sunflower or something like that because in the middle I can use a bunch of these colors. So I'm going to start setting up for that. Before I get started on my other stuff. I decided it's probably time for me to break out my new tripod. This is going to help me with my overhead view. I have one like it already, but it's old and it's broken. Hi. And it's a hassle to deal with. So I ordered a new one. I will link it in the description below. <laughs> you gotta let mommy work. You gotta let mama work, baby. Come on. Can you helping mommy? I don't know that there's much I need to do to set it up. Oh, she's hefty. This is the problem. This breaks right off.
Okay, so I'm going to set up my drawing desk. Now, I do have this desk. This is what I work on when I'm doing, like, something really extensive, especially in colored pencil. I like to have it upright. Then, obviously, I have my easel. But I also have my craft desk over here. And I have it mobile. It's on wheels. So, sometimes I swing it and bring it here and then use my chair. Other times, I just use my bench and have it right here. That way there, if I want to watch TV while I'm working, I can do that. I think that might be what I'm going to do today. What are you doing? You can tell it's getting to be springtime because I am getting a ton of flies and ladybugs in the studio, which drives Maisie crazy because she likes to go after them. Okay. This thing is humongous. It is huge. Uh, <laughs> that's what she said? <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm an adult, I swear. This is my old one, and yeah, it's definitely this one. I'm going to be able to film from across the room with it, so... I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to get that area set up. I got to bring some light stands over and things like that. And then I'm going to start drawing. Finally. I don't have the best light set up for this area yet. I have a much better setup for my main drawing area where my easel and my big drawing table are. So right now I'm making do with a ring light and this big huge light I have here and then I also have to turn on my big lights and even then it requires some color adjustment. This just feels really absurd to me. <laughs> I did not know it was going to be this big. Oh my gosh, so many opportunities for that's what she said jokes. Okay, so now I am starting on my preliminary sketch. This is going to be the sketch for the painting that I'm going to do with my core watercolors. And I have a cheap piece of sketchbook paper here that I cut down to a six by eight because that is the size of the watercolor block that I'm going to be working on and I am just sketching on my paper with a big mechanical pencil. I'm doing this from a reference that I took in our garden and I cannot wait to start painting this because I need the sunshine. I need the sunshine that the flower is going to bring me. And so I am super excited about this. Then I used some chalk pastel and I scribbled it on the back of my sketch. And then I put the chalk pastel side down onto my watercolor block. This is the Fluid 100 cold press paper as I mentioned in a six by eight. And then I'm using a colored mechanical pencil to come over it so that I can see what lines I've already traced over. And now it's going to transfer that sketch with the chalk pastel onto my watercolor paper. And I used a warm yellow chalk pastel because I know that that will blend in with my warm watercolors when I paint the flower. So here is the preliminary sketch. Not perfect, but I anticipate this one being painterly. Sorry, this uh, this computer is loud AF. Uh, I anticipate this being fairly painterly because the core watercolors tend to be pretty painterly. So that is the preliminary sketch for that. And yeah. I'm going to start filming that tomorrow, probably, the actual process of painting. Pretty excited about that. Okay, so we're moving on to day two of this vlog. Um, I got Macy here. <laughs> You're going to probably hear her. She likes to uh, whine a little bit when she yawns. So I had to take a break from filming yesterday because... While I was filming the vlog, I got a call from my husband, and 
found out that he had been laid off from his job. <laughs> Sorry, this is just such bad timing. I normally wouldn't post anything like this, but as I've recently decided to start vlogging again, it just happened to um, fall that way. Um, so I figured I would take this chance to let you guys know that things are kind of up in the air right now, so I don't know how often I'll be posting. I'm probably going to have to pick up more hours at my day job, which means I'll probably be on YouTube less than usual. Um, so we, he has a severance and we're going to be okay for maybe a month. Um, and then he's got applications out. He's been actively looking for employment. So hopefully this will just be a very quick rough patch. Um, but it is a little bit unexpected. We're not exactly the most prepared for it. Thankfully, I have room to pick up some extra hours at my work. Hopefully I'm going to talk to my boss on Monday. I have great bosses. I, yeah. So, um, I'm going to link my shop and my print site in the description below. I normally don't promote it that much, but I do have a shop and I do have a print site. So here's my obligatory. I'm an artist. I sell art kind of, um, spiel, I guess, if anybody wants to support. I don't expect it. I know that times are rough for a lot of people, but I do feel like I probably should at least mention that I have a shop. So there's that. Um, <laughs> for today, as you can tell, it's a little bit drearier out. There's not as much sunshine in the studio, other than Maisie. She's always sunshine. Um, but for today, I want to continue on where I left off yesterday. I think I'm going to get my materials prepared for my Holbein workshops and work on that for a little bit. And then I'm going to start doing my watercolor painting for my core review. And I don't know how much of that part I'll film because that's obviously going to be in the next video. And then we'll go up from there. I do want to say I... <laughs> I appreciate those of you who commented on my recent intense block video. You fellow rock collectors out there, this was something that I had thought about telling in the vlog. I see you fellow rock collectors. I really appreciate the fact that like there's so many people that follow me that actually also collect rocks. But I wanted to show you one of my favorites. I have crystals and things like that, but I also have this rock that I've had since I was a kid. It's pretty plain Jane. And I went through a phase growing up after I had learned about a little bit of geology in school. I must have been like six or seven or something like that. And I was already fully into collecting rocks at that point. But we had learned about how some of the ugliest, most plain rocks on the outside can have crystals on the inside. And so I went through this huge phase of breaking rocks. I would collect these rocks and then I would take these big rocks and like slam them on them and break them to see what was inside. And sometimes we found some pretty relatively cool things. Well, I had this honking rock that had been at the end of my driveway my entire life. And I didn't think much of it other than the fact that it kind of reminded me of Jupiter for some reason. I don't know. I was a strange child. I've told you this <laughs> and Jupiter was my favorite planet. So I don't know why it always made me think of Jupiter, even though it doesn't have stripes on the outside. I don't know. But it took me a while to dig this honking rock out of my driveway. I dug and I dug and I dug and then I slammed it and I broke it open and it broke almost completely in half and sadly I don't know where the other half is right now. Uh, it might still be at my mom's house. I haven't known where it was for years but I still have this half and while there weren't crystals inside I thought it was so cool. Like look at that rock. Look at the layers. So this is one of my favorite rocks that I've had since I was a child, and I thought my fellow rock collectors would really appreciate that. I love that. Then I called it my earth rock. So I, it used to remind me of Jupiter, but then I called it my earth rock when I was a kid because we had just learned about all the layers of, that are inside the earth. <laughs> so like this is the core and the, whatever. I don't even remember. I don't remember the details anymore. But yeah, it was one ugly ass rock, and I broke it in half, and you can just see the layers of minerals in there and it kind of shimmers you can't really see but anyways I thought my fellow rock collecting friends would appreciate that that's just kind of a fun little antidote time to get back to work
I present to you experimentations with Holbein acrylic ink, rubbing alcohol and water on Yupo paper. So satisfying to watch. So many results that I wish that I had had <laughs> looking at this. Oh, I'm going to have to do this again with more patience and leave some of the dark colors in there because this is just so satisfying to watch. This is not going the way, <laughs> the way that I thought it would. After multiple attempts, this is what I came up with. What is it? I don't know. It's kind of pretty, mostly not. It is what it is. It's kind of the theme of the day. It is what it is. We can try to control some things, but can't control most. I don't even know. It's It's been an interesting weekend. Look at my hands. <laughs> I think I have more pigment on my hands than anywhere else. I am liking this so much better now that it's dry. This is definitely one of those trust the process things, even though I had no idea what I was doing. I think I want to use an acrylic marker to draw something over it, maybe like a lighthouse or a map or something like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do next. I'm a mess. I am an absolute mess. It's um, It's been interesting. <laughs> Forward and onward. Okay, so is it just me or does that kind of look like a mermaid? I almost want to draw a mermaid. I'm not going to lie. Hmm, I'm going to have to figure this out. Okay, so here's my janky-ass Amy Winehouse wannabe-looking mermaid <laughs> and all her friends. I had paused it while I was drawing some of her friends because I needed to grab something and I forgot to hit record again. So that's why some of that's missing. It's been a day. It has been a day. And I also have over here... some other demo materials that I've done previously... This is their acrylics on the Stonehenge Aqua Black Paper. I love it. So much fun. And then I did this as well. This is just a demonstration of the mediums that you can mix with their acrylics. Modeling Paste Crystal Gel Medium. Their Gesso, which is obviously a ground, not necessarily to be mixed with acrylics, but you get what I'm saying. So, yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> I've made a mess of the studio, and, well, I came up here and did what I came to do. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go get something to eat. I'm going to clean up the studio. I'm going to clean up my hands because nobody wants to see this as a close-up. Well, I'm showing you close-up now, but I don't need this while I'm working with watercolor. And then I might start painting that painting with core watercolors. So I think I'm going to end the studio vlog here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. Let me know if you'd like to see more content like this. I wasn't quite sure what to do this week, and I thought it would be fun to just kind of hang out with you in the studio, take you along with me. If you'd like to see more like that, or if you'd like to see something specific in the studio, just let me know, and I'll see what I can do. Hopefully, I will be back next week with my core watercolor video, depending on how my schedule goes. So... Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. You have a fantastic day. Bye.